All right, everyone, if we can uh, kind of gather around. And, uh, we've got a man that needs no introduction. AA4DF Dan. going to talk to us a little bit about introductions of Linux and how uh, this powerful, uh, I don't know, I'm going to steal your word, but I'll let you introduce it. But Dan here has got some introductions of Linux he wants to share with us to make how we as a hobbyist can consume and use the product. Thank you. All right. Yes. It's not a presentation about DMR. <laughs> uh, the job that pays the bills is, for me is working with Linux. Um, been working with some form, some form of. Uh, Booting up and logging into a bash or a corn cell since probably about 92, 93. Um, kind of went from, you know, when one machine was really expensive to you could buy a room full of machines for about the same price. So they went and bought a machine room uh, full of machines and they'd be like, great, now I make them all look the same. So. I've been doing a lot of large install base administration and it's different from desktops because I'm concerned about getting a piece of Java installed on thousands of systems, not bringing up a GUI and trying to make it talk to a, uh, a uh, port on and hook to your 7300 or something. Um, so this is a little bit, as I told somebody, I'm both an expert and a novice in Linux. But I, I live every day in, in the bash cell. So I thought it was appropriate to do my uh, Linux presentation on Linux. Um, this is LibreOffice, which is, I think is fourth from OpenOffice. So uh, just some of y'all may know this, Linux started by Linux Corval. Um, back when I first got into Unix, it was expensive. And it cost a lot of money. And even if you wanted to do it on PC, you could. You could buy SCO Linux, but it cost a lot of money. Because they, they wanted they wanted their money. So a guy named Linux, or Linus, said, uh, he said, Man, what if we just were, took the manual with all the system calls and wrote a kernel from scratch that would do the same thing? So we basically reverse engineered a kernel. And then people wrote the uh, utilities for it. But when you wrote the utilities, you couldn't just cut the paste from Linux because that would, or uh, Unix, that would be kind of illegal. So. So it was all written from scratch to do exactly the same thing. And like some things in the internet world, a side project becomes the standard. Now, I mean, when it first came out, you never put this in a data center. You get fired for that. Right? Somebody at work got yelled for doing that. And now you wouldn't think of doing anything else but uh, Linux in a data center. So Linux is the kernel. Uh, we usually think of everything, but Linux is usually the kernel, and the utility software packaging is what you put into a distribution. A little bit of terminology there. Um, there's two main distributions or distribution paths. Um, one is Red Hat based. You got your RPMs. Uh, Yum DNF does your repo installs. You want to upgrade, Yum upgrade. Uh, there's an enterprise version if you want to pay a lot of money. And, uh, Red Hat, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, there's a, fr a free version, Fedora. Uh, you can just download that, don't have to pay anything for it. And uh, most of the time you do a uh, when you go down the Fedora pass, desktop GUI, you handle most tasks without digging in the command line. So you can configure things, upgrade things, uh, 
I do a lot of stuff, but I still like having it command line. I, I can't let go of it. Um, one thing though about when you get into enterprise versions, they tend to, they're there for stability for the enterprise customer. So you may, oh great, I got a brand new version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It just came out. And then you get using it five years later and you're trying to install software on it and it says, oh, the GLive C is too old on it. Well, they don't move the thing ahead. They just backport uh, patches into it for security. But it's kind of give the enterprise customer stability. Uh, the other path is Debian based. Uh, use dpackage to install a package, app get does your dependency resolving and repo access. Uh, a little bit different, app get update to fetch the list of software that can be updated and then app get upgrade to do the upgrade from the list. Uh, you can still go buy it. A lot of times people use Ubuntu LTS long-term support. You can download that for free, but um, a, lot of a lot of companies start using that uh, Ubuntu in their cloud products. Uh, you got Ubuntu, Xubuntu, Mint, and Pi. Because uh, one of the differences between Debian based and the Red Hat based is Debian, uh, the kernels and utilities are ported to other chipsets like Pi's. So that's why all your Pi's are going to be Debian based under the covers. Uh, so if you're going down the ham route, I kind of recommend sticking with Debian and just skip the Fedora because a lot of the ham stuff is geared towards the assumption is you're doing it on some sort of uh, Ubuntu device. Um, getting started. Uh, you can do the dedicated computer route. Um, that 2003 Windows 98 box with one gig of RAM. Um, don't go there. Um, or I recommend four gig. You can kind of get the run too, but four gig runs good. Dual core thread, 32 gig drive ought to be good. Uh, you can even fit it on the 20 gig, so it is pretty small. Um, I have one of those hundred dollar laptops from uh, Best Buy. You know the the cheap ones with the EMMC 32 gig drive on it, 4 gig of RAM. It's kind of a slow box, and I can't even get Windows 10 anymore on it because <coughs> when you do an update, it just fills the drive up. So I'm taking that, and it's going to be my dedicated uh, audio recorder. I have a scanner at the house. I'm going to plug this scanner into the audio port on the laptop. There's a version of Audacity for Linux. I'm using it for the audio <coughs> off the repeater. Just so you can, you know, if somebody says, hey, there was a problem the other night, they can go back and review the audio recordings on it. So, 100 bucks, I watch the sales and pick them up once in a while. Uh, dual boot. You can dual boot Windows Linux. But the thing is, is you are always booted into the wrong OS. <laughs> you're in Windows when you want Linux, and you're in Linux when you want Windows. But you can do that. And sometimes you get tired of switching, you'll stay in one of them, and the other one won't be updated with security updates. Are they physical? Does it mean the one of virtual? Uh, the first two are physical. Uh, virtualization, Oracle Box. Oracle. Uh, vir Oracle Virtual Box. It's free download. Hmm. Um, so. Has something free? Yep. Yeah. So I'll show you something here. So, you know, we're running on Linux here. But this is actually running on my Windows laptop. 
So that's pretty good. I've got a thumb drive in there. I've got the utilities installed. So even though I can plug the thumb drive in when it's running Windows, I've been able to get the virtual machine to see the USB ports and read the thumb drive. All the applications on Windows will run with it, run with it run into the background and vice versa? Yeah, I can uh, run whatever. I've, I've had uh, another copy of uh, PowerPoint running uh, a little while ago. Bring up Chrome browser, no problem. I've got 8 gig of RAM on this laptop, so I've allocated 4 gig for the virtual machine. Uh, so, what Linux are you? Which one are you running? This is Mint. Um, Mint's a lot like Ubuntu, and a lot of a lot of the hams like Mint. Uh, from what I've read on it, I'm, I'm not real particular to anything. I just throw something on there and go, this works. Um, but they've taken some of the problems with Ubuntu and fixed it and put a little bit better GUI on it and kind of made things a little more consistent. But the hobbyists that I talk to like men. <coughs> Pi device. Um, I could probably do a whole separate presentation on Pi devices. Um, you can get Pi 4, you can get 4 gig of RAM in it. I think it's got at least a couple cores. Uh, there's a Pi Top OS that runs on it. You can burn your SD card, hook up a monitor and keyboard. And there's projects on there. They make laptops out of these things. And I'm like, eh, okay. But they are good, like, I don't know, there's a lot of different utilities. I've got a DMR hotspot at home that runs on a, it, you can get an SSH, you can SSH into it and get a prompt and look around and it's, uh, it's a Linux box. And they stripped out all of the features that they can and it runs, uh, I've watched it and I'm a performance guy, so I look at it and go, okay, it's barely running it because it's like a half gig of RAM. But uh, <coughs> you can get up to four gig. I think the Pi 5s are out now. I haven't looked at those too much. Um, a lot of stuff now on ham radio is running on Pi. Um, you know, we've got those old cat controllers on the A2 and the 3.2. And those things are probably about 25 years old. They're going to go someday, and so I've been looking around for like a potential replacement. They've got Pi devices you can hook up to it, run it as a repeater controller, hook it up to the internet, download announcements to your repeater. Uh, MMDVM, you can make a multi-mode digital repeater out of it. Uh, we may put up an eye gate for uh, APRS, and that's just another Pi device. So there's a lot of repeater and ham applications for it. I think MFJ, rest their soul. Um, I think their station controller that they have is Linux based or Pi based too. I was kind of looking at that, but I'm sure there's a project out there. Uh, the 146.625, uh, if you don't know, when we have the first of the month weather net, it's actually an all-star mode, and uh, Michael Knight links it in to DMR, the DMR bridge, and it's all-star echo link, just running on a little Pi device. <coughs> got an IP address, I can SSH into it. I need a security update or two. So, but I, I like the virtualization because I can try different things out. I don't have to ruin a PC. Uh, if I don't like it, I can just delete the software. Um, so I, I kind of try things out there. I, I use virtualization a lot of work, so. You can snapshot things and roll things back, and there's just so many things you can do with it. But virtual boxes, what you need. 
Uh, some people they want to go all lengths and say goodbye to windows. Um, there's a hand buddy that I used to talk to in DMR a lot, Jeffrey, and he was a hardcore Chrome guy. He loved his Chrome OS. <laughs> And he couldn't get his HTs programmed. And he got tired of dragging him to meetings and asking somebody to program. So he bought a, uh, you can go to Amazon, it's like an HDMI PC. It just, instead of a USB thumb drive, it's an HDMI. He plugs it into his TV, runs the cable to it, and you know, keyboard and mouse, and his TV's computer. So if you want to totally abandon Windows, but you still need it, or the $100 laptop still works. Um, I can say Ubuntu, good place to start. Mint, I can say it's Ubuntu with a little bit of fixing. Uh, Andy's Ham Radio for Linux distribution. Or Andy's Linux for Ham Radio, I forget which one. You can search for that on YouTube. Andy does a presentation just about every year at date on his distribution. <coughs> it's all out there on source boards. And he's, he, I checked, he seems to have released a new version of the software about once a year. Uh, this, yeah, this is the page to spend shop because it's got all the buzzwords on there. Um, the tech prepper, he's been writing some income tools. I think he wants a little bit of money for it, but it's pretty good where he bundles a whole distribution. And he uses those um, rugged laptops you find on eBay that are used and refurbished. Um, they come with an SSD drive and they're rugged. Uh, if you look, at <coughs> Windows 10 is installed. And the reason for that. The old i5s do not support Windows 11. Yeah, if you have an old i5, you can't upgrade it to a Windows 11. Bummer, I've got an old laptop, works great. i5, try to do it again, upgrade. Microsoft says no. Put Linux on it. Um, FL Digis work great. Uh, W4JIT uses that a lot. He said uh, he had a lot of problems with Windows drivers. And said, hey, ran Linux, works great. Pi Stars, Pi Top, Pi Top OS, Pi Devices. Uh, Chirp will run on Linux. <coughs> uh, people use Chirp, program HTs. Edit CP if you've got a <coughs> dual band or single band 380. Uh, the any tones you can't. Uh, I'm sure somebody's tried to figure out how to get wine to work with it, but I've never had much success with it. And virtual box. So those are the things that you want to <coughs> take a look at when you start tinkering with it. I was afraid I was going to be a five minute presentation. <coughs> <laughs> so, I can say machine <coughs> just like 
Dan, you started you start that virtual box just like the regular, you start the inside of windows? Yeah, I'm putting it up in the regular windows. Uh, start. Um, I bring up the virtual box. I've got mint. Uh, remember the old TYT tools for the uh, single band 380? That's a virtual machine. I've got that as a virtual machine. Download the whole thing. But yeah, you just click on it. And uh, <coughs> it has a virtual disk. It, if you look at it underneath on the file system, it's just a big block. So if you create a 20 gig disk, it's a 20 gig file. But it boots, boots up pretty quick. I've allocated two processors to it, four gigaframe. I can add more processors to it. Um, you you want to have more than one because the performance on a single threaded plus not good. Uh, there should be more than third. I got a new laptop. It's probably got eight cores, so I could probably do four or six. Uh, I don't think you can add more virtuals than you have this case. But you can have multiple machines with two processors and it'll It'll slice it between your things. Like I said, I, I'm running mid, and while I'm running that, I can go ahead and uh, head start yourself in a while. Yeah, you gotta fix that. And Dan, if you're gonna try the, uh, the dual booth, Option. How much space do you need to allocate for Linux for the operating system? Probably mm, about 24 gigs. 24 minimum. Depends on how much software you want to put on there. I, I fill up this pretty quick at work. Uh, maybe, uh, well, I mean, discs are cheap now. I mean, this laptop is 500 bucks and I've got 500. 12 gig of SSD space, so it wouldn't be anything just to do a 32 gig uh, partition on the laptop. 32 is 20 gig? Yeah, 32 gig 20 gig. Any other questions, Dan? Okay, any questions? Say the hey, send me an email. So Dan, we appreciate that. That was very helpful, very informative. Uh, while Dan's uh, wrapping up, I'm going to uh, ask again. On your table is a uh, a QR code for our signal report. There's one by the door as well, too. If you'll just scan that real quick. We'd love to hear your feedback on how the program was tonight. If you want a paper copy, there's also a paper copy of the signal report. Again, I would very much appreciate having your feedback on the one thing you'd like to see the club do next year. Uh, I'm going to add that same question to next month's response, too. But sure would love to see that and hear back from you as to what you'd like to see the club do. One thing, just one thing. Um, I don't have any other items. Does anyone have any other comments or observations or that we'd like? Joe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Signal report? All right. It's real easy. QR code, it's on the table. So it should be working for you. Just pop it in your camera and it should take you right to a link. It's a Google form. You don't have to put your call sign in. You can be totally anonymous or you can tell us who. It, it's up to you totally. And if you do need a paper form, there are paper forms available. All right. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that.
Um, unless there's any other announcements or any other club business, I would certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes, sir. Do we have any announcements about the uh, December meeting? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So, thank you for reminding. Don't forget, our December meeting is our traditional club potluck holiday dinner. Uh, please put that on your calendar, second Tuesday of the month. The club is going to provide the, the ham and the drinks. Um, it will be the potluck uh, and bring along the side dishes that go along with that. Uh, it's really, there's not a lot of programming for December. It's really just a get together, be social, uh, and have a dinner and, uh, around the holiday season for everyone. Um, the only real little teensy little bit of club business that we do in December is we'll talk about a budget, um, but that's really just to propose that to the membership of what we're thinking about. Other than that, it's really just a time to get together and fellowship. Any other announcements that I may have missed or forgot? All right. Thank you so much. I would entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. All right. A motion to adjourn has been made. Is anyone interested in seconding that? Second. Seconded. And all in favor of adjourn, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming tonight. Go have a safe trip.